Good morning. morning. Hope you're all doing well. That you have a good weekend on this Memorial weekend. This is the seventh Sunday after Easter, Sunday after the Ascension of our Lord. Next week for the Bible study, there'll be a new study starting, so it'd be a great time to to start for the adult Bible study between services entitled A Praying Life. Beginning in June, on the Wednesday, there is a, a series Pastor Lewis will have on, there's an apt for that. And you'll understand that more as you look at it. A new apt every week for that five week series on the Gospel of John. rise. And again today we welcome Pastor Mark Lewis, who will be sharing with us on a regular basis on Wednesdays as well as some of the Sundays each month. In our bulletin notes we also have a statement of faith we'll have from some of our young people each week during the month of June rather than having them all at once. So you'll see one shared there by Kayla today. Let us begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Many, Lord, my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you plan for us. None can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. Then I said, here I am. I've come, it is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, Lord, as you know. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly.
Let us pray to the prayer of the day. God, we want to build up rather than destroy. We want to lift up rather than pull down. We want to live in the light of your forgiveness and extend that forgiveness to our neighbors. Help us to examine our hearts today. Show us how your words and actions can be life-giving or life-taking. We want to be those who love as you have first loved us. Amen. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading comes to us from the Book of Psalms, chapter 49, verses 1 through 15. God gives his great love to all, even the rich and the foolish. Hear this, all you peoples. Listen to all who live in this world, both high and low, rich and poor alike. My mouth will speak words of wisdom. The meditation of my heart will give you understanding. I will turn my ear to a proverb. With a heart, with a harp, I will expound my riddle. Why should I fear when evil days come, when wicked deceivers surround me, those who trust in their wealth and boast of their great riches? No one can redeem the life of another or give, God, give to God a ransom for them. The ransom for a life is costly. No payment is ever enough so that they should live on forever and not see decay. For all who see that the wise men die, the foolish and the senseless will also perish, leaving their wealth to others. Their tombs will remain their houses forever, their dwellings for endless generations, though they had named lands after themselves. People despite their wealth, do not endure. They are like the beast that perish. This is the fate of those who trust in themselves and their followers, who approve their sayings. They are like sheep and are destined to die. The death will be their shepherd, but the upright will prevail over them in the morning. Their forms will decay in the grave, far from their princely mansions. But God will redeem me from the realm of the dead. He will surely take me to himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson comes to us from the first book of John, chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. God is love. In his essential nature and all his actions, God is loving. John similarly says, affirms that God is spirit and light, as well as holy, powerful, faithful, true, and just. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we may live through him. This is love, not that we had loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also should love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. 
Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me, my word remains in you. Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As a father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that your joy, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard God's word, we confess our sins before his throne. We know that you are a God filled with love and compassion for us, your people. You promise to forgive the sin of all who confess their sin. Hear our prayers of confession. God, you want us as your church and your people to be disciplined and focused so that we can be bold when facing any situation. We confess we do not have the power or ability to live this way. Sin holds us captive and we cannot escape. We are dead in our sin and cannot save ourselves. Save us from our temptations, evil desires, and empty ways of living. Forgive us. People of God, here is the good news. God fills us with inexpressible joy because we have an inheritance that will not perish, spoil, or fade. This gift is guarded by the greatest power in the universe. We are buried with Christ in his death and raised to new life in his resurrection. Sin is forgiven. We are free to be the new people of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
Well, we're talking about our gospel lesson today. And so, I ask you, who are some people who risk their lives for others? What? Okay, yep, police officers. And who else do you think? Yeah, firemen. Can you think of anybody else? Oh, the people who work on the ambulance, yeah, things like that. What? Okay, yeah. So we have firemen and police officers, and yeah, here we have the Coast Guard, where they lower people down and they save people from the water and things like that. And here we have a Marine that's going into battle for something, so he's doing something to save other people. They risk their life for others, don't they? Yeah. And in our lesson, Jesus said that greater love has no one than this, then we lay down his life for a friend. So what about, what about friends? Yeah, yeah, kind of, if we talk about what does it mean to lay down our life, does that always mean that we're risking death? Mm, not necessarily. We need to lay down something. Maybe it's laying down the book we're reading or laying down our cell phone and listening to someone and giving them that time and spending time with them putting aside what our life is doing to do something for someone else, serving in some way. Now, there's somebody else who did that. Jesus, right? Jesus laid down his life for us by dying on the cross. And he took all of our sins to the cross so that we could live forever, right? So he laid down his life for everyone. And we, he wants us to take his example and live our lives that way, right? So that's how we can be a friend, by doing things for others, by serving, by putting our life aside for a while while we do things that help other people in the name of Jesus to give him glory. And we always wanna do things in Jesus' name. And remember that all the things we do should be done for the glory of God. So today we have a sheet about loving one another, what our lesson was about. And, oh, you know, ah, here we go. And will you pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you that you love us so much that you sent Jesus to lay down his life for us on the cross. Help us to show your love to others by serving in your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we are finally here. That weekend that we have long been waiting for, Memorial Weekend. Because it means summer has started. It means vacations are going to take place. It means opening up the cabins. It means getting out on the lake. It means catching fish, sitting beside grills, drinking your favorite beverage of choice, and relaxing. But we know it means so much more than that. It is amazing, though, and, and I hope that wherever people are, and you as well, you are able to take time today to remember those who have given their lives for us, who have given their lives for people throughout the world. But it was interesting, Friday evening, I was heading up about five o'clock to Wisconsin Valley Lutheran High School for their graduation service, and, and traffic was almost a standstill going north on 39, and both lanes, as far as I could see, and I thought, I'm never gonna make it. What happened? There must have been a terrible accident up there. Just, just think all the people that were heading north for the weekend. Well, we slowly worked our way up and I finally said, oh, goodness gracious, a police officer had pulled somebody over on a side road and everybody was stopping to look. And I said, good grief, you wanna get up north, go. You know, you don't need to stop and look at that. But you know, that, that's the way summer is, isn't it? I mean, it, it's a busy time. We're finding those times to get away and to relax and to enjoy God's creation. And, and I tell you what, there's nothing wrong with that. I recently entered back into the, the kind of the nine to five, five or six day a week employment. And uh, I tell you what, I look forward to the weekends as well. But this weekend, though we call it the kickoff for summer, means so much more than that. It is the day to remember, the time to remember and to give thanks to God for those who make it possible for us to be here today to be here and worship and proclaim together Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord. To proclaim with Christians throughout time, throughout space, and across our great planet, to proclaim that there is only one God and one Savior. And it is He who gives to us the gift of eternal life. And as we think about those wars that have been fought, for freedom, for deliverance. I want you to realize, I want you to understand there is another great war going on today. We are a church and we are called the church militant. We're not a church who sits back and says, we're just gonna relax and take it easy. God calls us to be a church understanding the battle that we are in today, a battle for the very souls of those whom God wants to call his own. There is a war taking place. And Paul tells us it's not of flesh and blood, but it is of, 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 of the demons and darkness and principalities. It is Satan himself who is at war against God's church and against God's people. And today, as we look at these readings, I want you to think of these words of Jesus when he talks about that greater love. And he says, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. And that's God's call for his church today, to be ready to go into battle, to lay down our lives that others might know the promise that is ours. It is so important. It is so vital that this is the ministry of which we focus. David wrote Psalm 49, and he said, listen to this, both high and low, rich and poor alike, I'm going to expound on a riddle. He says, he says the rich, the rich spend their times, and not just the rich, but, but people, people spend their times trying to make a name for themselves, trying to, to establish that which is going to last. And David said the end result is everyone ends up in the grave. It doesn't matter how wealthy we are. It doesn't matter how much we do. In the end, we remain in the grave. 
David says, no one can redeem the life of another or give God a ransom for them. The ransom for a life is too costly. No payment is ever enough. The reality is because of sin in the world, death comes. And every one of us has been and will be touched by death. And in this world, this world, there's, there's a lot of hope that's offered today. A lot of promises that are given. A lot of places we are told to look and to focus our hearts and our lives with that promise that there will be some type of redemption. Something that because of what we have done or because of the, the prophet or the person we put our hope and trust in that somehow they are going to redeem us and raise us from the dead. And David said the reality is it's too costly. There is no man, there is no prophet in this world that can redeem us from the grave. And yet the world would have us believe so. it is so. One of my least favorite bumper stickers, and I'd love to carry a can of spray paint and use it every time I see it, but I know that's against the law and I don't, is coexist. Coexist. God doesn't call us to coexist. God calls us to proclaim the truth and to stop being silent about it. For the reality is sin brings death, not just death in the grave, but death eternal. And the truth is, as the psalmist said, their tombs will remain their houses forever because they're not able to buy themselves out of death. But you and I know there is hope. You and I know there is a promise that has been given to us. It is a promise that comes in the word of God. And we hear that in 1 John chapter 4, where John writes, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. And this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. That is the promise that God has given to you and to me, to the entire world. He says there's one way. There is one way to know that death will not be the end for you, but will be the entrance to a life that is glorious and a life that is eternal. That only way is through his one and only son. Say those words with me, one and only son. One and only son. How many ways out of the heaven? One. Through who? His only son. Not through any other faith, not through any other teaching, not through any other tradition, not, again, not through any other prophet only through Jesus Christ. And we believe that. We confess that. In just a few minutes, we're going to come up here because of that. We're going to come up here and receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ because we know that through it, through him, our sins have been forgiven and we rejoice in the life that is given to us. John says, God loved and he gave and he calls us now to be loving one another to be proclaiming and to be sharing that message of Jesus Christ with those with whom we, we come into contact every day. We cannot be silent anymore. Summer vacations come and we look at our, our, our churches and, and, and I, I always tell people who, you know, who say they're going up north for the weekend, I say, good, bring me back a bulletin. Uh, 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 and, and they leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, we need to be people who are gathered in worship. Summertime, it's a time when our, our, our churches seem to get empty. But you know what? It's not just summertime anymore. It's because we're being quiet. It's because we're silent and we're not proclaiming the message of Jesus Christ and bringing people to the cross so that they might know that salvation that is ours. Our pews are emptying because nobody new is coming in and you and I are growing older. And yes, we, we, we are taken away from here to the glory of heaven. But Jesus tells us that we are not to keep silent. That we are to be the proclaimers of the truth today and every day. Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. It's a picture of sacrifice, and it's a call for giving of ourselves. And I want you to think for just a minute, think about this. Uh, how many friends do you have that aren't Christian? 
Or maybe say they are. I, I see people every day who say, well, I used to go to church, but not anymore, but that's okay. I'm all right with God. You know people like that? Can you, can you think of five people in your, your, your little sphere who maybe are like that? Or, or three? Or one? You know, sometimes, sometimes as Christians, we surround ourselves with Christians. And those are the only people we tend to know and the people that we tend to, to be with. But God tells us to get out into the world. He says, go into the world and make disciples. And we can't do that when we stay in the church. We can't do that when we stay in our own little groups. We need to be out and we need to be living with people and loving people and caring for people and getting to know people. And as we do, to share with them the joy and the truth and the love that is ours, that God loves them so much that he has redeemed them and rescued them from death. God calls us to be people who are willing to sacrifice ourselves. Now, now again, when's the last time, I, you know, for 33 years, 34 years now, I've been in ministry. One time when I was a teenager, one time when I was a teenager, we went out with a group of Christian youth and, and we were in talking with a lady in a farmhouse and, and all of a sudden we heard and the husband came walking in with a shotgun and, and uh, we just got up and left. I'm not sure if he was threatening us or if he was going hunting, but we just thought maybe we should get out of there. But, but in all the other times, I have never been hit. I've never been slapped. I've never been chased away. Even down in Guatemala, in some of the worst places you could live, we go to homes that are shacks and we're uncertain about that. And we go in and we share Jesus with them and they welcome us. And maybe, maybe somebody here has had a bad experience. Jesus says those sacrifice and, 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 and right away we think of that. Boy, it's going to hurt. Well, the sacrifice, sacrifice of time, sacrifice your, 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 your pride if it is, you know, I'm afraid or I don't, how will people respond if I talk to them about Jesus? God doesn't care how people respond to you. He cares how, he cares how people respond to the word and they need to hear that from you and me. I shared earlier the story of a friend of mine named uh, Dan who who stands in grocery stores and when he's shopping and, and uh, he sees people and if he has the opportunity, he will ask uh, one of the families or he'll ask a cashier, he says, do you think they'll have hot dogs in heaven? And they say, that's strange, why would you ask that? And he says, because I'm a Christian and I believe one day I'm going to heaven and I like hot dogs. And it would be pretty good if there were hot dogs in heaven, don't you think? And it starts a conversation. We don't need to know all the doctrines of the church. We don't need to have the scriptures memorized or even know what's the right verse to share with a person. We just need to be there in love, reaching out to people in need. I love to do that when I go shopping, especially if there's really nobody else around and to talk with that cashier. So how's your day going? Okay, just okay. Why just okay? And it is interesting to find out what's going on in people's lives when you show just a little bit of care. And it opens a door. It opens an opportunity to say, hey, you know, if nothing else, I will pray for you. And people are amazed by that. And people's hearts are touched by that. When you say to them, I'll pray for you. And even more, if you have the opportunity to just say, hey, can we pray right now? God loves you. And he wants to take care of you. God calls us to be people who are out there in the battlefield ourselves because of the love that has come to us. Greater love has no one than this, that he lays down his life for his friends, and God calls us to be doing that every day. And when we do that, and when we do that in prayer, I love this. Uh, the readings I had, I think, uh, last time I was here on Mother's Day even, too, that uh, Jesus keeps saying this over and over again. If you believe this and you ask it in my name, it's going to happen. Ask it, and it'll take place. And, and the question is, do we believe that? Do we believe that God wants to grow his church? Do we believe that God will grow his church? We need to pray about it and then go and be the church. It's a Memorial Weekend, and there are a number of movies that are on or will be. 
depicting the battles that have taken place for the freedom of this country. And I like that scene where they're sitting there in their foxholes. They're down deep, hunkered down and and waiting for the command and, and the cry comes, it's time, the charge takes place and you watch as these soldiers just quietly and carefully climb out of their foxholes and shh, 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 don't, don't let them know we're here. Let's sneak up. Let's, let's just, maybe we can get through this. With, have you ever seen a, a, a soldier do that? No. The rally cry goes and what happens? You hear the, ah, let's go on, up and get out. And together they go charging out with power and with force and excitement and, and drive. And they go and they get into the battle and they fight for the victory. Our churches today need to ask the question, have we sounded retreat? Are we going back into our foxholes? Are we coming back into the safety of our churches and we'll let the world continue on, let the battle out there for the souls and morality of the people be won by Satan, but we'll be safe here? Are we ready to lay down our lives? Are we ready to take the rally cry and go and proclaim there is no God but one? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God who sent his son to die for us to take our sins away. This is the truth, and there is no other, and I'm not going to put up with any other. I'm not going to accept it, that there are other ways to get to heaven. And that may be politically incorrect, and that's good. And it's time to be politically incorrect. And it's time to be Christian. It's time to be God's people proclaiming God's message to a dying world that thinks that's being lied to and says they're going to live forever. I got to wrap this up. But what does David say? Their tombs are going to be their houses forever. I don't want to be under a tomb for eternity. I want to be with my Lord Jesus. And his message is the one I will live and I will proclaim and I by the power in the word of God, charge you to do the same. Go, make disciples. Share God's love. Change the world by changing your home and changing your community. Father, that's our prayer, my prayer this morning for us as we gather together that we not be silent, but give us the boldness of the Spirit. Give us the boldness of Apostle Paul, of Peter and James and John and all those disciples in the early church that went forth and suffered all, even death, as they proclaimed the message of Jesus Christ. Father, work in this church, in these people, in our hearts and lives, that we might further your kingdom that through Jesus more may be ransomed to life eternal. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. And we do confess one Lord, one God, one Savior. I invite you at this time to stand with me and to make that proclamation of our faith as we speak the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
O Lord our God, we give you praise. As nations battle each other, we know that you are still in control. To know that you rule over the earth in spite of our sinful limitations gives us confidence and reassurance. Accept our praise, O Lord Most High. O Lord of the nations, we live in difficult times with ego, evil attacking in various directions. Please guide and direct leaders to seek peace, to govern with concern. Bless the efforts of our president and world leaders seeking ways to resolve the issues of conflict, immigration, war, famine, persecution, oppression. Especially be with Christians like those in Egypt and in the Middle East who are targeted and persecuted and killed for their faith. We ask your blessing on Stephen ministers and caring helpers as they visit and share with others, bringing hope and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit as you promised. We thank you for your ascension as you marked the time of completing your mission here on earth with Jesus. Thank you, Father, that he prays for us and prepares heaven. Thank you for the faithfulness of Jesus. Keep us faithful. Into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning, as you pray the Lord's Prayer, I'd ask you to look at the cross, envisioning that Jesus is praying for you as well. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Rise for the service of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on Easter overcame death in the grave by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you, this do in remembrance of you. In the same way, he took the cup, and after the supper, after he had taken part, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink. This is the blood of the New Testament, shed for you for the remission of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord.
May his body and his blood, which is given and shed for you, strengthen you and keep you faithful to life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you that you refreshed us again through this very special gift. We pray of your mercy that you would continue to strengthen us in faith toward you and in love toward you and each other. Through Jesus Christ, our ascended Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Amen.